of us. I thought for a minute up there that you were going to replace the Screenwriters Guild <laughs> with all of that comedy that you were getting <laughs> <laughs> from uh, Robert and uh, yeah. from Angelo and Angelo Angel steamed, you know. <laughs> I wish you'd have told us how he really felt, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, there were some strange things happened in that fight. I'll tell you that. I think that's the first uh, double uh, low blow that I've ever seen. Boom, boom. Yeah, and I, I've never seen two headbutts low, and <laughs> maybe he was getting even for those. But you know, really, it was a good fight. It was a very grueling fight. I didn't think it was quite as uh, well. I don't want to say they had it one-sided, but the judges seemed to be scoring it in terms of about seven to three there, the way that it went. And I thought uh, Shannon deserved better than that as far as the scoring was. But I still had Banky ahead by a point at the end pulling it out in my card, but in the last three rounds. Now we're getting ready in the ringside here at the Fabulous Forum for our national anthem. The United States Marine Corps has a quartet of men here with the color guard. And let's go up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. and he will introduce the fine singers that we have for you. Ladies and gentlemen, before our main event, I ask you to rise for the singing of our national anthem in the ring, along with U.S. Marine Corps color guard recruiting station Los Angeles. My pleasure to present to you, singing our national anthem, Michael Piles and members of the CME Community Choir. Oh, say can you see the great Thank you very much to Michael Piles and members of the CME Community Choir. Also thanks to the U.S. Marine Corps Color Guard Recruiting Station, Los Angeles. Go, the main event for the evening, the United States Boxing Association Bantamweight Championship bout, scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. This bout is supervised and directed by the California State Athletic Commission in conjunction with the United States Boxing Association. Representing the California State Athletic Commission, Chairman Bill Malkazian. Commissioners in attendance, Jerry Nathanson and Raul Silva. Supervising at ringside, representing the California State Athletic Commission, as well as the United States Boxing Association, the Assistant Executive Officer, Marty Denkin. And introducing the officials as appointed, from West Covina, California, Raul Caiz. From Burbank, California, Kenny Davis. And from Tucson, Arizona, Gerald Moltz. Presenting the referee in charge of this bout, he will be giving instructions after the introductions. From Huntington Beach, California, Dr. James Jen Kin. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the USBA Bantamweight Championship belt. Introducing to you first the challenger on my right. He's fighting out of the white corner, wearing light blue trunks. Hailing from Wichita Falls, Texas, he weighs in tonight already 118 pounds. His record, 14 wins, 4 losses, 11 big wins by way of knockout. Currently the Texas Super Bantamweight Champion, ranked number eight by the NABF, introducing the challenger, Gil Tweedy Contreras. <laughs> and his opponent across the ring on my left in the blue corner, introducing the champion. Wearing black trunks with white trim, Hailing from Houston, Texas. He weighs in tonight the exact same weight of 118 pounds. His record, 16 wins, 7 losses, 3 draws, 5 wins by way of knockout. Ranked number 5 by the IBF, number 6 by the WBA, and he is the defending USBA Bantamweight Champion, presenting Kenny Machine Gun Mitchell. Referee in charge, now to give instructions, Dr. James Jankin, 12 rounds of championship boxing. Mouthpiece. Mouthpiece. Gentlemen, you obey my commands at all times. Shake hands, good luck. Dr. James Jankin, brief but certain. 5-1, Kenny Mitchell, short. 
Contreras, much taller, 5'9". The weight is the same, 118. Mitchell is six years older at 28. And uh, Contreras with a seven-inch reach advantage, 71 inches. A 12-rounder, remember. And Mitchell comes out in a hurry. Boxers can get caught cold. Check, and that's yep. just what Kenny Mitchell is trying to do to Gil Contreras here in the opening moments. One of the most difficult things for fighters, especially young fighters, is to be warmed up properly. That's up to their management, of course. But sometimes, like when you have the national anthem here and some other ceremonies, they are warmed up in their dressing room, but they come out and they stand, and some fellas, quote, they get uh, thawed out a little quicker. You know, that height and reach disparity that you mentioned during the tail of the tape is an obvious problem that Mitchell has to solve, and he's doing it so far. He's got to get inside of that long reach, and he's doing it his right. He shakes the head of Contreras with a good left hand. Remember, Contreras is only 22 years old. Mitchell should be in his prime at 28. He is the champion of the USBA Bantamweight division. He won it from Gabby Canizales back in March. And that's saying something, because Canizales yeah. is a heck of a fighter. This is uh, the second defense of the title by Mitchell. Obviously won the first. Watch your head, both of you. The warning, you heard it clearly. Watch your head, both of you. Boy, Mitchell's really having a terrific first round, and the reason is he's just smothering Contreras' attack. He's getting so close that Contreras, with those long arms, can't get any punching room. Very good round by Mitchell. Mitchell handled by Don Clark, Contreras by Dave Gorman. Dave Gorman also handles Don Curry, Donald Curry. And Stevie Cruz. And Stevie, yeah. Former featherweight champ. They're going to have to change the style of Contreras. they got to get Mitchell out of there. Mitchell's in close, too close, to allow Contreras any punch and room. Okay, hold it. Time. Time. Time out is called. What's this call for? I'm not sure what. Is what's there a cut in the eye? Party. I don't what see a it. A butt is the call. I heard the referee say a butt. There is a cut. Let it go. I still can't see it. Can you? No, I think it's, I think it's just around the right eye. It's barely started to open. Yes, it's just in the corner of the right eye, below the end of the brow. The referee, Dr. James Jenkins, definitely called it a butt. They'll work on it feverishly between rounds. seconds and it's been all Mitchell our replays will show later when we get a chance to show them to you that definitely it was a butt 12 round USBA Bantamweight Championship and the champion in the black trunks is Kenny Mitchell the machine gun and he's been firing like one since the opening gong due to the scoring rules now chick which have come under criticism in some uh, cases. That puts Contreras at a little bit of an advantage now if this fight should be stopped later on because of the cut, because he would not be, he would not lose it if the fight is stopped by that cut for the reason of that cut alone later on in the bout. The cut does not look severe. In fact, I don't think if Dr. James Ginn had to pick it out that we would have hardly have noticed it before the end of the round because it was so well hidden in the corner of the Right where the eyelid comes down toward the cheek. There was another headbutt there, but this time they smacked it directly in the middle of the head. Of course, Mitchell is running in on him. That's right. He's just There's going to be some headbutts in this fight. You can't miss it. And he's so much smaller. Shorter is a better word. Mitchell has only five KOs in his... Uh, 26 bouts. You know, the interesting thing about that chick is you look, he's very thickly muscled, very heavily muscled. And most of the times in boxing, when you see builds yeah. like that, except in the case of Tyson, of course, it's the guys who have the biggest, heaviest muscles and really the great bodies that don't have the power. And firstly, Contreras, tall, skinny lad at 5'918. 
He's had 11 knockouts in his 18 fights. Right. 14 of them wins. Well, you take a look at him. You remember Danny Little Red Lopez, yeah. skinny guy. Where does a guy like that get any power? He eats his spinach. <laughs> well, next. Round two of a 12-round championship fight. You know what's interesting here, Chick, is that Contreras seems content to fight a close-range fight. He's not trying to establish a jab and keep him away in long range. Well, Dave Gorman in this corner with the success he's had with people like Curry and Stevie, uh, you know, he, he's probably told him, just take your time, we'll get him, we'll get the little guy. There's always the old adage, little guy might get you. Fights out of Pensacola, Florida now. He's been around Houston, New York, North Carolina. In fact, he still holds the New York State Batmoy title. Good uppercut. <laughs> Marty Dinkin, California State Athletic Commission, has informed us that through six rounds, should the fight be stopped because of the butt, it would call a technical draw. But anything after the end of the sixth, then they score. They'll go to the scorecards. That's a little bit better way, I think, than just I do too. adding up the totals after two rounds or three rounds. By the way, down there in Wichita Falls, Texas, I understand that uh, the hometown of Gil Contreras has a huge gathering at the cable TV station listening to us and watching us and watching this fight and pulling for Gill in the light blue trunks. We're in round number three, and how do you have it scored so far, Rich? Well, I have the, the fight with the Mitchell out in front by a point. I gave him the first round and called the second round even. But I thought the second round was a much better round for much better. Contreras. Yep. There was a little bleeding from the corner of the eye from the cut. That was incurred by the butt in the first round. But uh, they stifled that in a hurry. Chick Contreras seems able to back Mitchell up in this round, which he was not able to do in the first round. And if he can do that, this fight could turn to his advantage real quick. This 22-year-old kid, Contreras, is ranked number 10 as a bantamweight by the North American Boxing Federation. Tonight he's fighting for the United States Boxing Association. And I go with Tyson. Let's solidify all these associations. Get one, huh? That's right. school two years ago. We get hungry and after the fight, Gil can cook for us. He's a short order cook. And he's not fighting. Looked like his knee buckled there, but it, uh, <laughs> it, it was not from a punch. It, the good line came from Trey Romano on the truck. He said Mitchell is a short order for him. <laughs> That's cute. Boy, with the guys we've had on the card tonight, Robert Shannon, you know, he's a... Oh, oh good uppercut by Mitchell. Yeah, go ahead. A haircut artist, a bit of a barber himself. He cut the Olympic teams there. That's right. He could pick up a haircut in a meal. He was called the haircut artist of the stars or something like that. <laughs> Boy, that's another good uppercut by Mitchell. Jar in the head of Contreras. The cut's starting to bleed yeah, now, Yeah, there it comes. First time has been noticeable during the rounds. It's at the corner of the right eye of the taller lad, Contreras. Mitchell not working on the eye. This is gonna let it take its time. We're in the final seconds now of round number three of our 12 rounder. It's a championship fight and a big one. Leading badly. All right, here we go now to the fourth round of our 12 rounder. Little patch on the cut in the front of the eye of Gil Contreras. He's the challenger, and there goes the patch. Immediately, Mitchell knocked it off with a left hand. Mitchell hit him on the wallet with that one. That was a low blow, but on the wrong side. The last couple of rounds have been different for Contreras. He has kept a little guy. Side on him 
for shortening his punches, but again now Mitchell's trying to do that. Yeah, he's starting off now the way that he started off round one when he just smothered Contreras' attack, and there's a good right Copy. hand trick. Copy right hand over the top. He does his best when he's just all over Contreras. He's only five feet and one inch, folks. It's an eight-inch height advantage and a considerable adva disadvantage of reach as well. Another shot to the right jaw. That's on the opposite side of the face where the cut is. More jabbing this time from Contreras. That long jab trying to keep Mitchell away. Chopping right hand. He's scoring frequently with the right hand in this round, Mitchell is. Contreras is a guy with a lot of heart. We saw him dropped in that double of fight. He really went down hard, lost his legs for a, a few minutes, but he but he hung in there and managed to go the distance and nearly pull the fight out. So he'll hang in there with Kenny Mitchell. A lot of people thought he beat Davila. <laughs> I think the theory probably is that Contreras in his corner are so anxious to cover up their right eye that they're dropping a little bit and allowing to come in over the other side of the cheek. But Contreras likes to dip, uh, Chick. He likes to dip the left shoulder and punch the left to the body. He's just coming over the top when he dips that shoulder. currently rated number five by the International Boxing Federation and number eight by the WBA. Good exchange of right hands because Contreras landed one himself. Mitchell has found the range with right hands in this round. Big. the attention goes to that cut and it's a it's a cut in the very corner of the eye getting it worked on right now it has been bleeding pretty much since about midway through the first round he came out with a patch on it at the start of that last round but it was knocked off by the first punch that kenny mitchell threw but actually you know the punches that are getting to him are the right hands on the other side of the face there's mitchell who also suffered a slight nick on the corner of his eye. I thought so in that last round, Chick. You remember he was hit a, a good, bit, yeah. good solid right himself. So he had a slight nick over there as well. And his cut does not appear to be near the trouble that Contreras' corner is. We should point out, in case you've joined us late, that Contreras' cut was caused by a butt and called as such by Dr. James Jenkins and the, the referee immediately. Yeah, but remember, anything that happens before the start of the seventh round, is considered a technical draw because the wound was inflicted by a butt. Yo, and we have floor. tape to prove it. Well, they really drenched Kenny Mitchell with water. <laughs> yeah. It looks like he went for a swim. Round five. Contreras <laughs> speeding up the punching a little bit. because Mitchell seems to build up the momentum, Chick, as he comes in forward. Stockily built at 5'1". He weighs 118 pounds, and so does Quideris. Contreras at 5 feet 9. Oh, a solid right hand to the cheek of Contreras. The left jab is what Contreras is trying to use to keep him away. Again, a head warning from the referee, Dr. James Jen Kim, one of the most respected in his profession. You know, Contreras is throwing the jab out there, Chick, but he's really not hitting him with it. He's throwing usually two at a time. Yeah, but he hasn't hit him. See, two misses again. Mitchell is dancing around it and throwing the right hand. 
amazing that Contreras, the guy with much longer reach, is having trouble reaching Kenny Mitchell. And you know, it's not a slow jab. He's flicking it. He's really throwing it out there. Since an even round two, 
This fight has been all Mitchell, and we're in the sixth round. Again, those jabs Short. missing. Short. That was picked off. It sounded good, but it was picked off by Contreras. That one wasn't too bad. Round number six comes to close. All right, let's take a look at the action. We've got a delay in the start of the next round. I'll tell you why. Okay, as you see, again, it was Mitchell trying to back up Contreras. He's trying to keep it in long range. Now, here's a crunching right. There it is again. That one doubled him right up. Check another crunching right by Kenny Mitchell. Strange thing happened in the corner. That's why we were late starting the round. Dr. James and Ken called time because Kenny Mitchell lost his mouthpiece. None of the handlers could find it in the corner. How do you lose a mouthpiece? Well, it's made of rubber and he double dribbled. <laughs> Some guy in the second row found it under his shoe. <laughs> lose a mouthpiece. <laughs> Round number seven. We're seeing some first tonight, Chick. Yeah, we had the double low blows in the first yeah. fight. <laughs> Chick oh. Hearn with Rich Morata, Jerry Romano, and Susan Stratton producing, directing. Hope you're enjoying it on Prime Ticket. <laughs> Jarris has not been able to score at all speak in this fight. And as you see, he continues that rhythm, two jabs at a time, and usually they miss. Mitchell has been able to successfully slide away from those. He keeps moving to his left. Look at the cut on Mitchell's left eye, Chick. All of a sudden, it opened up, and he's bleeding. Let's take a look when he turns around to see us here. And he's back to us right now. Yes, there's blood coming down the uh, outside edge of the left eye now of Mitchell. The right eye of Contreras was butted open in the first round. We're in the seventh round, so the scorecards stand now under the new rules in this championship fight. Wow, what a right hand that time. An amazing one butt opened up a cut on the right side of the face of Contreras, and all those right hands to the other side haven't done anything in the way of cutting. I think one of Gill's problems is he's being a little predictable here in his attack. He just has a rhythm in the way that he throws his punches. And Mitchell seems almost able to time everything he's doing. Good shots to the belly. This is the kind of fight that could put Kenny Mitchell into world championship oh, sure contention. Is. Sure is. You say if he was only a little taller. Well, might help. Might not, too. He's a pretty elusive little guy out there. Five feet and one inches. And one inch. Well, I'll tell you this, Chick. As you saw there, Contreras frustrated, made that Very. face. He not only is out punching Contreras, he's out boxing him. Contreras in this match so far is overmatched. Superior boxer, superior puncher, and obviously superior on the scorecards. Just a reminder now, fight night at the Forum returns to the prime ticket lineup on Wednesday, July 27th. Make your plans to join us as we continue the strolls to under the first. WBC Bantamweight Championship. Miguel Laura and Albert Davila. Laura is 29 and 0. Davila, 55, 9 and 1. Also on that card, a non-title over the weight lightweight fight. The WBA lightweight champion Julio Cesar Chavez against Yogi Buchanan. Chavez is 58 and 0. He's considered by many Chick to be the best pound-for-pound pound fighter in the world. That's on August the 1st, and of course, we'll have all these shows for you on Prime Ticket. But if you're in the area, come on out and see it. I'm looking forward to that happy Laura Albert Dowell yeah. fight. That's a rematch of about that they had. Laura's our aunt. 
Excuse me, one second. Tickets are on sale now at the Forum and can also be purchased at Ticketmaster locations. Yes, go ahead. Laura took a close uh, decision in their first fight, but that was down in Latin America, and Davila feels that once he gets him on his home turf here, it's going to be a different story. Hey, that long jab finally reached the chin of Mitchell. I think now it's gamble time for Contreras. He's got to throw away the plan that he's been working under, come up with something else, and his corner may have told him just that. Dave Gorman over there. Mitchell actually landed a body punch, and that really hasn't been, you, you would think that a guy his size would be looking to go downstairs, but he hasn't had any need to. He did in the first round to prove that he could, and after that, it's been all downhill for Contreras. You know, I think Contreras was really surprised, taken off guard, thrown off rhythm in that first round, Chick. Great plan by Kenny Mitchell. Yep. As boxing fans are prone to do, they'll start yelling for Contreras to get in there a little more. We had a couple of near knockdowns, but no one's hit the deck yet. Ooh, almost then again. Well, there's the knockdown. Contreras appears to be fully in charge of his senses. And let's see how his eggs and reflexes are now. His right hands again, Check two rights. Oh, that shot to the midsection by Mitchell. Okay, hold it. Contreras can't take much more of this. Combinations to the face, right, left, left again. To the body and hanging on. That may stop it. That might be the end of it. I think Dave Corman in the corner might think about stopping this. His fight is starting to take a beating here. The rules read as long as the fighter can defend himself. And now Dr. James Jenkins must make that decision. And he's looking on very closely. And I don't think he's going to allow Contreras to take much more of a beating. And the fight goes on. I guess you could say the beat goes on. Oh! Are they going to stop this thing pretty soon? Final seconds of the round. And Contreras looks at the referee as though to say, what do you think, ref? Now there's one second left. The round's over. That's a terribly difficult round for Gil Contreras, and I don't know if they're going to let him come out for that next round. It's all over. His, he went over to the corner and looked at him. He might, have, he might have even got a suggestion from Dave Gorman, his handler. The fight's over. And for the third time, defending this USBA Bantamweight Championship, 28-year-old Kenny Mitchell wins the fight. In the ninth round, and they had to stop it before the ninth began, and it was a good stop. Well, I'll tell you, in the last half minute, Contreras took a terrible beating. We're going to come back with the official time of the stoppage in a moment. Strohs Live, we have brought you the 12 rounds scheduled for 12 USBA Bantamweight Championship. They weren't able to come out for the ninth round, and here is Jimmy Lennon Jr. with the time. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of round number eight, referee in charge, Dr. James Jenkins, stopping the contest in conjunction with the corner, winner by way of knockout, and he's still the USBA bantamweight champion, Kenny Machine Gun Mitchell. To the successfully defending champion, California State Athletic Commission, Commissioner Jerry Nathanson. He's a tough little guy, and he's a good fighter. And this might set him up, as we suggested earlier, for a world championship shot. He wears the belt. He'll have to have it altered a little bit. It's a little big for him. I think they took that off of somebody else. Anyway, let's go up to Rich Morata. Okay, and we have the victorious Kenny Mitchell. Kenny, congratulations. Terrific fight. It looked to me like you wanted to come out and take control right at the beginning of the fight. Okay, that's what I had to do to win this fight. It didn't yeah. seem as though he could reach you with his jabs, which was kind of a surprise to me because yeah. he's so big. Why is I that? Was working on, I was working on in the gym, you know, how to get on there. And my trainer, Bill, 
He's a good trainer. He the one taught me how to move, you know, how to get in the inside. He told me how to guard fight. Let's take a look at what some of what happened in that last round, Kenny, now, and have you describe what happened. Let's take a look at the knockdown. Your right hands were really coming. Oh, yeah. I'm working on it. I got more power with it now. I'm much stronger with the right hand now. I'm going for Orlando Candles. I want him. The, w, the WIBF Bantamweight Champion. That's who I want next. Okay, take a look now at the end of the round here. You're still landing those rights. Uh -huh. And left. Mm. Uh, strong. Yeah, you were very strong. Okay, Orlando Canizales, that's who Kenny Mitchell wants next. Orlando was certainly impressive in winning the title last week. Good luck. You looked a uh, tremendous Romero. night Thank for you. Romero. I thank Romero for working with me. Uh, 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 Romero again. Down in Houston, Texas. Okay, congratulations. Still the champion. Kenny Mitchell, let's go back to Chick Hearn. Well, you can't knock it. He won the title in March, and he's defended it now successfully three times. So our hat is off to still the champion, Kenny Mitchell. Now, coming up next, the four-round super welterweight preliminary. We're going to have Lavulo against Wilkerson.